Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brett. Welcome to Crypto Mastery here. Today is September 26th, and uh, we're going to dive into some news and then look at some charts and uh, specifically how the indicators that we use are um, what they're telling us, kind of reading the tea leaves. Uh, so don't have my camera on this week, but uh, let's see. I want to welcome everybody who's here live. And let's see, we've got David, Rennie, uh, Susie, Mike, kind of a small class today. But um, and if you are new here, you can uh, find out more about uh, these uh, classes here and getting our crypto checklist. Now, I think, Myrene, if you're still here, we need a new link for this on the new CryptoMastery.org uh, link. So that is uh, CryptoMastery.org. Uh, if uh, if this is new to you, if you're watching on YouTube on the replay. So <clears throat> we'll get that uh, link to the uh, trader checklist. That's very important um, and something we use to really maximize uh, the gains, entries, exits uh, in the um, in the course of all this. But let's start out with some news here. Uh, we've got some, you know, just scouring news here a little bit. Top stories. We have Bitcoin gains legal recognition as digital currency in Shanghai, China. Well, looky there, China, after banning Bitcoin six or seven times, it would seem now they have, uh, as I was saying all along, they were accumulating it so they could make it legal later. And, uh, you know, Bitcoin mining is still uh, not legal, but they might bring that back. I, I imagine they will. And so anyway, uh, that's news. We sort of heard rumblings of that recently, but uh, funny graphic here. Um, Cointelegraph uh, has great graphics. So the Chinese uh, headband on the Bitcoin. Uh, so let's just unpack this a little bit. Chinese court released on September 25th. So that was yesterday discussing the development of internet technologies. Not sure how that's relevant, but um, okay. Well, it says stated with the development of internet technologies, digital currencies such as Bitcoin stand out as unique and non-replicable. Well, gee, duh. Uh, report states that among a sea of digital currencies, Bitcoin is different and unique from other digital assets. Now, this will not stop them from creating their own CBDC, which, um, you know, you know, we're, we're kind of at least putting the brakes on it here uh, with some recent um, legislation and uh, the political parties blocking that. But, um, you know, that'll probably come at some point. But uh, yeah, here, despite a blanket ban on cryptocurrencies in China previously, uh, let's see uh, the f legal arguments for defining Bitcoin as personal property have gained a lot of traction from the local Chinese courts. So it is interesting in, in the you know, the uh, nation state that is most known for withholding and um, cr clamping down on personal freedoms. You know, if you've heard anything about these social scores, I was watching a video about that uh, recently yesterday that the uh, the tech is so intrusive there and they have so many cameras like on the intersections that if you jaywalk, they'll socially shame you. They can scan your facial features, the way you walk, uh, who knows what else, and they'll put your picture up on the billboard, but they can also prevent you from being able to buy things from vending machines if you have a bad social score. It's just, it's ludicrous. Uh, so it is surprising a little bit to me that they are allowing this and it, there has to be some benefit to the uh, CCP for, uh, uh, for doing that. And um, Hey, I'm not going to poke the bear. No, nothing against the CCP. If I get hit by a bus tomorrow, uh, you know who it was. Um, but yeah, no, the, you know, look, it is what it is. They um, uh, give them mixed signals here. The latest just report acknowledging Bitcoin and its attrib attributes as an asset class gives Bitcoin and other, other digital currencies in China more legitimacy. So we'll have to keep an eye on this story. Uh, so far, we're not seeing much of an impact uh, in the markets. Bitcoin, Ethereum, barely moving. I mean, look, if we turn off the grays, you know, it's all red, mostly red, but barely. You know, these uh, very thin markets here, uh, hardly anything moving uh, at all. But uh, we are seeing some interesting signals on our indicators. We will get to that here. We'll unpack that a little bit, uh, not to get ahead of ourselves, but uh, we'll uh, hop over there soon. And let's see. So uh, we've got anything else here? Let's see. Yeah. So crypto exchange claiming 1.4 billion trading volume used reportedly fake licensed data. Who was this one from? This is kind of some non-news here. There's This has always been going on and and these exchanges, uh, yeah, bits of pay. So this is this is not unique to this exchange. I won't even name them. But, um, you know, fake volume has been a problem on these uh, other non-regulated exchanges for quite some time. And uh, no need to really unpack that. It's still the Wild West uh, here in uh, crypto. 
Uh, so um, let, let's not dive into that rabbit hole. Let's kind of stick with the top nose here. Bitcoin rises, but surging bond yields will keep the pressure on cryptos. Yeah, I mean, the inverted bond yield, I'm not going to get too far into that, but you know, that has uh, apparently never really been wrong. And, um, but there's a lot of firsts, you know, I, I, we, we don't like to put on our tin hat, but we do like to keep a somewhat contrarian viewpoint because consensus is dangerous. Is that right? And, you know, when everyone thought Bitcoin was going to a hundred thousand, including us, uh, although we were, I was one of the first to say, this doesn't feel right, you know, and say, uh, suggesting getting the cash back in November of 21, December and, and pounding the table in January, really get out. Um, but be, uh, cause we were seeing those signals, but really everyone thought, oh yeah, we're going a hundred thousand. Uh, and so, um, that's just one example, of course. So, uh, let's see here. I do have some chat. Uh, let me get the chat window up too. Uh, let's see. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mike, welcome. Um, uh, you're new here. I see David, uh, and, uh, and afternoon here in the UK. All right. Sounds good. Uh, where are you at in the UK? I used to, I used to love going over there and I was used to speak in, in the UK four times, five times a year, sometimes in my last uh, business before COVID grounded us. And yeah, I missed coming over. I used to speak in Kensington and Richmond, a uh, charming uh, area, and uh, London, of course. So uh, let's see here, uh, the uh, unpacking this a bit more, Bitcoin. <laughs> it's amazing that the markets are so slow that it's newsworthy that the Bitcoin price has gained. Um, okay, well, it says less than 1%. That's the, uh, the newsworthy part of it. And it's funny because I was looking at TradingView yesterday. I didn't post anything because... It, it literally there was nothing happening. You know, it used to be that uh, Bitcoin moving, you know, ten percent would be newsworthy, but now it's you know, less than one percent. So, but this is the hallmark of the bear market, and you know, we are having the, coming into the having in April of twenty twenty four. I think October, November, we're going to start seeing things inch up again, but it remains to be seen. Do we have the big blow off top? because we haven't really had the everything bubble burst before. And this uh, recession, this is not related to this news here, but this recession or the recession that some feel that we have sidestepped, I don't think so. I don't. I would be cautious to believe that, may uh, in fact come next year. And so we just have to be ready for everything. But uh, you know, the good news is, the indicators that we have tell us where the money is, the big money is going, and we're following in the footsteps of elephants. Uh, and that's really kind of what we do with that. So let's see. I don't want to read through all of this, but uh, Bitcoin's still on that range, you know, the 25,300 to 32,000 range. We'll look at that here. And of course, we unpack that in more detail tomorrow in our M3 Active Trader class. Uh, if you're new here and you want more information about that, that is at moonstream.io slash M3. And that uh, includes our indicators, uh, daily updates from me in the signal chat and also a weekly class where we really dive into more detail. You can read more about that here. Uh, so anyway, that's for, uh, the, this is on the YouTube channel. And if you are watching and enjoying this, please like and subscribe to the channel. All right, I have to put in that little, uh, people, uh, you know, you have to slide that in there because otherwise people won't do that. And the more people we get in the community, the better, I'd say. And so um, let's keep going on this here. Barron's kind of not the best news. A lot of these are ad driven. So they're somewhat newsworthy, but more clickbait than anything. Uh, let's see. Uh, Birmingham. OK, yeah, I didn't make it to Birmingham yet, Mike. Maybe next time. You know, one day I would love to be coming over there and doing seminars like uh, real seminars, small ones. And um you know, we used to do uh, 20, 30 people, sometimes 50 uh, in a room. And, uh, and when I was teaching uh, business, building building online businesses. And so, but um, trading, of course, is uh, what I was doing before that. And glad to be back in here, but I've always enjoyed meeting you guys. So maybe when this COVID stuff settles down, we can uh, figure out how to get uh, in, a, in a room with you guys and do a live event, at least a big uh, live event, at least one a year. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? get to meet everybody that would be uh be great so uh, let's see uh bernstein not sure who bernstein is analysts uh ei potential bitcoin etf approval by early 2024 yeah i mean that's what i've been saying a lot of people have been saying that usually even with um i, I almost said bird rock <laughs> which uh, black rock bird rock's my favorite little town in uh, california by the way it's north of san diego 
BlackRock, even with their huge power and promises of bringing, you know, allegedly 10 trillion, potentially 30 into this whole market, um, probably it'll be early 2024 for them and likely they'll be the first. So, you know, but with that, uh, this, you know, people are estimating, I don't want to give Bernstein too much, um, Attention here, because I don't know who it is. Estimates crypto will mature from cottage industry to asset management industry. Now, that is important because there are so many um, organizations, you know, retail can obviously go buy Bitcoin. Retail traders, that's you and I and, uh, you know, people uh, and versus institutions uh, can go buy Bitcoin. But a lot of the bigger players and the um, the real money, the big money can't, you know, it's pension funds uh, and uh, other large organizations and institutional traders, unless they're a hedge fund, you know, can't, they need to have regulated markets. They can go buy micro strategy as a surrogate. Many are, and you know, there are, there's ARK Invest and uh, they have, but the, but the true spot ETF isn't here yet, at least not in the US. So when that happens and it will happen, you know, 90, let's say 98% chance, there's, I can't see any reason they will block that from happening. Uh, and so, um, but there's so much money, including sovereign wealth funds that will be ready to come in for that. And that's trillions of dollars. So you know, this, uh, it's inevitable. It's just a matter of when. So that's kind of why we're talking about this dollar cost averaging strategy and tiptoeing into these markets, but being ready for this big news and uh, positioning in front of it, because when this is approved, fully approved, expect to see a massive big green candle in Bitcoin and all across crypto. And, uh, you know, we don't want to miss that, you know, being in the market, uh, it was going to be useful. The saying time in the market is much better than timing the market. Well, while that is true, I'd say a, a hybrid of that is really going to be the ideal scenario. So having some money in the markets right now, keeping some powder dry. And uh, if we do go lower, we've already identified key support levels and areas to potentially buy more and then, you know, to lower the total or average cost of the asset, right? So I'm sure you guys are all following. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of get into the charts here in a minute, as I said. Uh, let's see, Digital Asset Summit uh, 2024 coming to London. Well, there you go. That'd be fun. I know there's one coming to DC, but uh, I know it'd be a good excuse to come on over the pond again. And uh, I know we got a number of people over in the UK, you know, Matt Skinner's over there. Uh, who else? Uh, Mike, of course, is there. Who else? Anyone else here from the UK? Um, you know, uh, it'd be fun to do. Come over and do an event. So, all right. So then, of course, we have Grayscale. Um, the big thing with Grayscale and GBTC is that they, the SEC's minor victory, essentially, where the judge, the panel of judges, asked the SEC to review Grayscale's application, basically saying, "Hey, the SEC, get off your butt. Uh, you know, give these guys an answer." You know, they, of course, have been applying for a spot Bitcoin ETF for a longer period. Then it would really be unfair to give one to BlackRock and not give one to GBTC. So, um, you know, so the chances are also higher, emphasis on ER, higher, and not uh, not high, that uh, early 2024 has will get GBTC um, approved or not, but you know, it's hard. It's not, uh, GBTC may not get approved. There's, there's definitely backroom dealings with these things. Um, it is what it is. So there's some talk about if GBTC, uh, is sort of, uh, needs to liquidate, um, you know, because of their sort of involvement with the, um, the, the Barry Silver group and, um, you know, the whole lawsuits and the money lost with Genesis and things not to go down our, another rabbit hole. But there's some talk of if GBC, GBTC had to dump all of its Bitcoin uh, and some Solana, et cetera, because of the lawsuits. And, um, you know, and then there's FTX. I think I'm mixing up FTX there. But but regardless, um, it would be absorbed quickly and easily by um, BlackRock. Right. So it, it would make it would be better for us, to be honest. Um, you know, you know, many tentacles to these things, but I would say if BlackRock were approved first, uh, and then Grayscale, you know, then all is happy, and then of course the yeah, there's a couple other ETFs that would likely get uh, 
uh, approved Fidelity, Vanguard, a couple other ones. And and look, let's just say, let's pick up our magic eight ball and shake that thing and say, uh, is it likely that many of these will be approved in the next two or two years? You know, and the little magic eight ball would say signs point to likely or say signs point to yes, right? So. Uh, we can't 100% confidence in the magic eight ball, but um, you never know. That's that's my guess that we'll see this happen and it'll coincide with this next great bull market, which regardless of recession, there's also talk of the fact that uh, the signs are there that this next bull market rally will be monumental, largely because of these big companies getting approved. So I know there's a lot of noise out there, but keep in mind, these are on ramps to big money coming into crypto. And we've already seen the signals that these big companies want to get in. Now it's just a matter of well, can they? And uh, so, you know, I think I'm preaching to the choir here, but uh, that's the key thing we're really we need to pay attention to. OK, so let's see uh, just to. Yeah. And, and this is the core crux of the argument here, because the uh, SEC is basically they're concerned about their surveillance sharing agreement um, with. Uh, well, with, it comes down to can it be regulated? Now, there's an argument that the the uh, futures. So we have the Bitcoin futures ETF which are cash settled. That's why uh, the Bitcoin price didn't go up when they opened it. It went down <clears throat> because they weren't actually buying Bitcoin. But um, a little bit of a review for you guys. But essentially, the argument now is, well, um, the futures markets on the CME, the Chicago Merchant Mercantile Exchange, does have sur surveillance sharing agreements so that uh, the they can, the, you know, Big Brother can see what's happening. Essentially, uh, there will be less likelihood for manipulation. Well, the argument is, well, if that's the case, then it should be the same with the spot ETF. So why won't you guys approve it? It all comes down to who's going to be able to watch and look over them. Okay, so, you know, so, and that's going to sort its way out. But essentially, the SEC is saying uh, commission finds appropriate does it designate a longer period with which to take action on the proposed rule change so it has sufficient time to consider the proposed rule change on issues over lawyers uh, word of here, but um, that's why they're delaying it. So they can ensure that they can spy and surveil uh, everything to make sure it's on board. Now, I will say this, this is not a bad thing. La in 2022, there's, and I saw this firsthand, many of you know this, I got caught upside down on a uh, highly leveraged Bitcoin short, and I was right in the direction, but I have screenshots of how, how they just manipulated the price uh, and uh, and uh, they is un they are unknown, but the markets that be kind of allow the prices to go up, big short squeeze, and, and they push it right up, right up above my uh, my uh, price. I was exiting the position, but um, you know, they took it right up to there, and then went down from that very level, you know, and it's just um obvious manipulation in there. So I, I think it's good for us because without supervision, the temptation to go and get money. Uh, now, the hedge funds will call it efficiencies and profitability. That means screwing us over, taking our money, uh, you know, not putting my tin hat on. But that's the case. It's, it's, you know, if those rules and provisions and protections are not there for us, we're screwed. So, and, and in many ways, we're up against AI's, AI trading bots. And that's why day trading uh, is almost, it's near impossible now without your own algo uh, and uh, why we I decided not to teach that because it's uh, very dangerous stuff. But our swing trading point is our swing trading gives us an edge. It's always been the biggest edge in trading. I've been trading for 25 years because you can trade along with the bigger players. And with our software here, we can follow in the footsteps of the uh, bigger players. And that's the name of the game, you know, uh, <clears throat> unless you want to buy and, and huddle forever. Which you know to some degree is is fine. That's not our style here. And uh, um, <clears throat> but some of you having some of your holdings, just put it away and hold it for ten years. Sure, why not? And then using your swing trading to add to those bigger uh, baskets and accumulate them on a cold storage wallet. So that makes a lot of sense. All right, I'm going kind of fast, you guys, because this, uh, we've already been over this a number of times. So uh, let's see. I've also been hearing more about the opportunity in stable coins. And uh, let's see, it's transformation from offshore unregulated crypto to onshore regulated. There's that word again. Now, positive regulation and positive and clear regulation is what we need uh, and versus unclear, which is what we have been seeing regulation through enforcement, which is not positive or clear. 
and more direct utility around mainstream payments. Guys, I have to say, and global sentiment, it's it's become so easy to do this. I just this morning, I had five minutes logged into Gemini, sold some Bitcoin to USD, transferred it to my bank account. Boom. Um, it's it's getting really easy compared to uh, early days. And, and that's what we need. We need this to be easy for people. Uh, and I still, how many of you, by the way, still talk about mentioned crypto and people are like, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, we are still so early, you guys. Uh, let's see a couple things just to skim the news down below. I won't go into that. HTX. Why would you call something HTX when it's so close to FTX? And now look at this. Uh, Justin Sun is is uh, back to shenanigans and losing money, it seems. Um, yeah, a little uh, article here about uh, basically saying you want an edge in the 2024 election. Look to crypto. Yeah, you know, more of these people are going to start saying, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm pro crypto to get the crypto vote. Coinbase gets green light from Bank of Spain. All right. Hong Kong, etc. Bitcoin. I was trying to get to this. Bitcoin held by Coinbase rivals Satoshi Nakamoto's in size. Well, you know, I think I would flip that headline. Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin uh, is similar size to Coinbase, which is massive. So that's about 5%. Uh, now, I did hear um, recently some of those Bitcoin recently were activated. I have to unpack that, but doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be sold on the markets. We'll be able to kind of keep an eye on things. Here's a digital asset summit 2024 in London, uh, March 18th to 20th at the Hilton London Metropole. Uh, maybe you guys know where that is, but um, London's a great city. I don't know where the Metropole is. Uh, let's see. Okay, interesting. London's become one of the world's hottest crypto hubs. I would live in London. Uh, that'd be fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, what do you expect here? 499. All right. Well, if anyone's going to go, let me know. Maybe I'll uh, pop over. It'd be good to uh, get back over that way. I just uh, pulled up an old photo uh, at the Savoy Hotel. For those of you over that way, at a charity fundraiser. I think it was about seven years ago. And here's a picture of that. Look at this. I'm not sure if you can see this, guys, but it's a photo here. It was a fundraiser, black tie fundraiser at the Savoy. And uh, great fun. I don't know if you guys can see that. It may not share that little screen image. But any any rate, uh, let's see. How are we doing on time? We're doing well. We're going to pop back over to charts here in a minute. I just want to unpack the news. If you guys do have any questions, uh, put them in the chat. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks, Susie. What the judges said on packing the grayscale court ruling. This is uh, old news, though. Yeah, that's from August 29th. Um, isn't that funny how news only has such a short uh, lifespan? But um, that SEC, yeah. Well, the only thing here is this is interesting, too, that the SEC lost the ruling three to zero, agreeing that the SEC's rejection of these spot ETFs was arbitrary and capricious. There's a big fancy word, uh, capricious, kind of meaning uh, unnecessarily like angry or, uh, yeah, you can go define that. But um, <clears throat> acrimonious, a similar one. So um, anyway, we'll see how that un unfolds. Curve finance, this is news from today, but curve price spikes. Now we saw this uh, the other day. I was seeing that I put it out in our M3 trader that curve looks good and the chart on CRV was looking good. So that's where we were able to see the uh, the whales accumulating that didn't have the news yet. Isn't it funny how you guys hear me say this all the time? Show me the charts and I'll what? Tell you the news. CRV was pushing up above its 50 day EMA. And now we're hearing the news about it. Let me just pull up. That was a total market cap. Let me pull it up on Binance. Similar chart, but, um, you know, uh, still still a nice looking chart here. What do we have? We have a key. We have a new key forming. So if we have a bell tomorrow, this could be a good signal. It's a little bit overbought on the TSI. So what we would do is look to a weekly to see if we're set for follow through. And it looks like we are. So we want to keep an eye on uh, CRV. And let's see. Oops, I got these things all in the wrong order now. I'm trying to get the signal line so I can see what's going on there on a weekly. So if we start to see the weekly signal go green, and it looks like it was it's about to do that. Um, so CRV, you guys, it's um, it's looking pretty good here. I'm going to make sure it's on our 
crypto mastery watch list because it wasn't until now. It's on our M3 watch list. We have been watching that over there. Okay, so what, what's important here on this chart, by the way? What am I looking at? Well, I'm looking at our early reversal indicator, this green line here. Again, on the weekly time frame, designates longer time uh, follow through when and only when it coincides with TSI going above 20, going green above 20, right? So, uh, you know, we had a little fake out here, but, you know, you've heard me say the coins have for their own personalities. We saw a little fake out here too. And then it ran back in July of 2022, we had a little pop there. So um, this little fake out here is okay. And uh, if we see a double bottom on this, so we want to watch. And what I'm going to do here is set an alert on the TSI crossing up above 20, because that's going to be interesting. And that way we can just kind of shorten this alert out and say, okay, bye. And I'll put question mark, question mark, which means go back and look at it. But that's those are those setups we want to see. And ideally what we want to see is back above the 21 and the 50 weak EMAs, the weekly EMAs, because when those cross back above, generally there's follow through on the daily and the weekly. So the early indication would be the um, the daily. Just it, it does, the, the ominous part of this is has a bearish ERI. It's a little bit overbought on the TSI. So we're not, don't have a clear signal here. But uh, this uh, push higher uh, is... Part of this news here that we see that we saw here curve uh, see curve price spikes as whales accumulate let's find out why uh let's see anything else uh bitco ceo says political pressure not the law preventing spot bitcoin etf so that's some new news yeah uh, bitco not familiar with but um let's see trader predicts uh, year end rally for ethereum updates outlook on bitcoin yeah lots of analysts out there so traders and analysts so uh there's a, there are a dime a dozen let's see okay. well this is uh yeah no no kidding uh basically saying venture capitalist says bitcoin ethereum and three more are core networks for the crypto space yeah gee you think so uh, 2020 trader who called 2022 bottom warns of major pain coming from Ethereum. Uh, they love these uh, clickbait headlines because people always want to see, uh, they click on the fear and see what um, might be coming. Uh, Kristen Gilderbrand, of course, pro crypto. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how many of these people line up and say, oh, oh, we love we love Bitcoin and crypto. And then all the news clips from them three, four years ago saying they don't believe in crypto come out. Sorry to sound so cynical. It's it's more funny than anything. Uh, these politicians clamoring for a piece of uh, they're like vultures clamoring for a piece of the kill there. And uh, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. You have to get in office to be able to implement any of your policies. OK, huh? Bit Bloomberg crypto analyst uh, right there should be a suspect <laughs> says Bitcoin at historic highs in two on chain metrics. Um, I, I would, I'll bite. I'll look at that. And, uh, hedge fund Pantera Capital is one of the bigger ones. Three massive catalysts could push crypto into bullish territory. So it's also interesting to see how, uh, you know, these, these companies and organizations kind of like Jamie Dimon over at JP Morgan saying that, you know, Bitcoin is just trash. Meanwhile, they're buying it because they want to push prices down. Well, I'm sure that Pantera is heavily invested. So their news is bullish, obviously. Three massive catalysts could push crypto into bullish territory, whereas uh, Bloomberg analysts are late to the party. They want to push price down so they can buy it. That's my uh, my cynical read there. Um, I'll take off my tin hat. For now, uh, payment and benefits tokenization. Yeah, this is good news here. Also for our retire rich class, we talk a lot about tokenization of real world assets or we did in a recent class. So uh, Mike, you're in luck. Uh, I would go watch that. That was a couple weeks ago. Uh, Federal Reserve releases paper on the benefits of tokenization of real world assets. Uh, this is coming, guys. This is going to be huge, hugely transformative. And um, <clears throat> if you're not already in our retire rich class, uh, you can send an email to uh, moonstreamvip at gmail.com and we can discuss that with you. But we're talking about emerging markets there, including tokenization, also NFTs, metaverse, and uh, the next vet variations of NFTs. Uh, metaverse, uh, virtual reality, and how they all kind of come together and things like that. 
Um, I guess we're, we're we're diving a little deeper into the news than I wanted to. Uh, okay, two hundred million dollar exploit, Mixin Network. Hmm. You know, it is. Uh, it's it's just kind of sad to see this is still happening because at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, where's who, where is this two hundred million? Where did it come from? Who who's losing that money? And um, you know, and 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 where is it going? Is this Kim Jong Un buying missiles? More more nuclear missiles. It's just kind of a you know we have to find a way to track these things at some point. Uh, and um, three criteria for rally. Uh, all right, so a that's enough of that. Let's uh, let's kind of skim through these curve price spikes as well. Suddenly accumulate CRV on chain data suggests we can see that in the chart also. Uh, shot up on value on Sunday as the asset witnessed a spike in whale accumulation. Uh, Sunday is here. Well, we were watching it last week. So anyway, um, yeah, news is usually late to the party. Let's see. I'm just trying to find out why this might have caused that. Is there any relevant news? And I don't see any. So it is what it is. We'll keep an eye on the curve on the chart. Bitcoin CEO says political pressure, not the law, preventing spot Bitcoin ETF from approval. That's interesting. Let's see what he has to say here. His opinion. Uh, we all know uh, opinions. Uh, everyone seems to have one. Okay. Uh, Belshi politic politics. Uh, well, it's a lot of word salad here. What's the point? So showed up. So right after Biden was elected, remember Elizabeth Warren uh, <laughs> showed up and very publicly said, we're going to unwind all the crypto stuff. Yeah. So uh, she's et cetera, et cetera. Lies. She's very predictable, understandable. Um, there's, there's really non news here. What's the point? pointless this is pure clickbait there's no there's no meat in this article whatsoever useless all right so a trader who called 2022 bitcoin bottom warns a major pain coming for ethereum there's downside target uh let's see why a top trader gee they don't even name them um and it's just yeah bitcoin's bottom last year well so did i i predicted 16.5 six months before we got there people laughed at me uh Certainly couldn't have predicted FTX, but nevertheless, may see deep devaluation before carving out a bottom. I don't know about this. Why would Ethereum go down? Like now that it's deflationary, and um, although Tika Tawari, of course, uh, was pounding the table last year, Ethereum must go higher because of this unique event. Uh, yeah, I've known Tika a long time. Um, uh, no comment. So breaking down against Bitcoin, a pair of massive sell-off, or just a more accelerated. Why? They don't really talk about why here. He's looking to why that's why that capitulates. Um, I mean, look, I'll show you in the charts where I think Ethereum could go, but that would be if the total market cap goes down. There's some um, there's no real reason for it to go down other than the overall market. So there's some more non-news there. Thank you for that. Uh, Daily Hoddle used to have better uh, articles here. Maybe uh, we should stick to uh, Cointelegraph. Crypto analyst says Bitcoin, our historic highs in two on-chain metrics, a mid-bear market. Uh, Jamie Coots, never heard of them. Historic strength, two on-chain metrics, uh, while Bitcoin remains relatively low. So that's misleading. It's flashing historic strength. But the headline is historic highs, which would indicate it should pull back, right? So all this new stuff, really hard to wade through. That's why we go through it together. Uh, addresses uh, with greater. Yeah, I mean, that's that's nothing new. Addresses with greater than one Bitcoin is at historic highs. That's good. And um, that's really the one you want to watch. There's there's a lot of all these on-chain metrics. Look, the thing was on-chain metrics, and you can go and go down a rabbit hole with Glassnode and all of that stuff. But let me tell you something. Uh, I sat, Some of you know the story, but at the last Bitcoin conference, uh, it was actually last year, uh, I was in a whale session. I was I had a whale pass. I was in there for an hour, listened to uh, the editor of Bitcoin Magazine. Um, what's his name? Dylan Lachair go through all his fancy on-chain metrics saying that uh, here's why we won't go, low, go below 30,000. 
on uh, Bitcoin. And uh, I kind of raised my hand at the end of it. And I said, well, um, you know, what would you say to people like me who think, well, we're going to go <clears throat> below that, maybe down to 20,000. And uh, I sort of uh, condescendingly glared at me, said, well, I just showed you why. Uh, anyway, that's what we were up here and or down in here. And um, yeah, so looky there. He was he was uh, kind of. yeah. So these on chain metrics can be deceptive. That's my point about trying to uh, blow my own horn here. But, um, you know, that's why we don't get into all this. You guys, I can go into on chain metrics. It's just it's a lot of noise. And it's in the end of the day, people vote with their wallets. It's always been that way. And so the charts are the charts. And that's going to show us what's what's happening there. You know, there's on occasion, there are some things on in there. We look at Mike looks in there. And uh, but for the most part, we're not seeing anything that's is predictive for that so uh there's some more non-news there three massive catalysts could push crypto into bullish territory hedge fund patera capital we can skim this uh let's see what could those be uh spot uh, bitcoin etf approvals we've talked about that and second catalyst that this person says improving regulatory environment mm, kind of the same thing but but that's worth worth noting you know, certainly Ripple had its minor win and uh, and we have grayscale in the wings. So regulatory clear, uh, regulatory clarity is important. Yeah, I mean, also Coinbase is, you know, they're potentially leaving the U.S. because of the unclarity there. And that wouldn't be bad. That wouldn't be good, rather, for uh, U.S. crypto adoption. Lastly, cryptos are what in we're calling the dial up to broadband moments. That's interesting. Uh, and yeah, and so it's early. I have a, a graph, a visual in one of our presentations, just showing where we are in the, the whole scheme of things, comparing it to the internet. And we're kind of in that dial up to broadband moment. So circa 1996, still very early here, which is good. So letters about crypto is a point much like internet was 20 years ago. Yeah, I would, you know, I would say that's uh, maybe more like 23, 24 years ago, but close enough. Scaling solutions for Ethereum like Arbitrum and Optimism. We're also watching those. And, and, uh, and another watch list, making tremendous progress. We're seeing increased transaction speeds. Yeah, and, and just a reminder, Solana is in a trial with Visa. Speaking of transaction speeds, in a trial with Visa to become the new rails there, if they pass, then Visa may well switch to Solana. And that would be good for these transaction coins that are in, in the space, Solana, certainly. And, uh, you know, I recommended that. You guys know, some of you have been around that long. That was our, our recommendation in August of 2021. I recommended, I said it would pull back to $35. That would be our buy. Uh, and it did, and it went up 657%. Uh, it's come way back down now. They had some trouble on the network. And so it's it's a second chance for Solana. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that too. But uh, we don't want to get in too early. We want to let the charts tell us when. So those three things. Okay, you know, nothing groundbreaking there. Federal Reserve releases paper and benefits of tokenization. I think the headline says it all. Uh, tokenization. Now, if you don't know what that means, by the way, this means that going forward, things like real estate and large purchases, even including artwork, are going to be tokenized. They're already being tokenized. So instead of having to buy into a REIT and real estate investment trust, you could just buy some uh, as many tokens of the asset as you wanted. And that would kind of go up and down in value uh, along with the overall asset. That's uh, huge implications there. We did a whole class on that in Re Retire Rich, uh, which um, some of you are in. And, uh, and that's, again, the headline is the news. Scale of tokenization quite small. Uh, when measured relative market size of each token reference asset. However, many projects involving categories of reference assets and development. Why can't they just speak English? It's simple. <laughs> Make it simple. Let me digest this for you. Uh, lowering barriers to entry for people. Making it easier for you and I to buy big assets like real estate. All right. There you go. What would you do without me? Bitcoin uh, checks the three criteria for rally new all-time highs. This, we, this, we've already, oh, let's see. Uh, pseudonymous analyst tech dev, a lot of controversy on tech dev, by the way, uh, on YouTube. So I don't fully trust him. He claims he was the um, lead tech at Google for a while, but um, he's uh, he certainly had his share of controversy, including I think it was a million dollar coin he was uh, shilling. And um, uh, so anyway, 
uh, liquidity signal, blah, blah, blah. These seems like pretty other indicators. The three prong signal break above 20, blah, blah, blah. I mean, come on, you guys. Nothing. Well, anyway, so the month, the the monthly MACD, um, I don't watch MACD that much. The monthly is what told us and told me that it was time to get out of the markets in December and January of last year. So, um, you know, the monthly MACD has gone bullish, but just barely. And uh, which we can see here, but uh, we'll look at that. We don't need this. All right, guys. Well, that's all the news that we have time for today. We're about 40 minutes in. We did more news than usual. Let's look at the markets here. Uh, the heat map here is still showing uh, just not much of anything. If we turn off even these that are one percenters, the only things, uh, let's see, we've got nothing notable. Chainlink I want to look at because the chart on Chainlink is looking really good. I, li I like that it's pulling back because I think it's ready to go. Uh, let's see. Optimism, MakerDAO. Arbitrum, but you know, not huge, not huge movements. FTX tokens, even though it's still alive, is down. All you can do is laugh. Uh, not laugh at people who lost money, obviously, but just um, they're trying to revive it. Let's take a look at optimism real quick because I haven't looked at the chart here in a while. So, and we just read about uh, that in a news story. But look, the, our radar is all red on this. This is nothing we want to be looking at buying. We have a bullish ERI. Okay, so so you guys know off and I'll do sort of my off off the napkin read all red on radar and radar no go. But then I'll always go back and look and say, all right, what where how what am I missing here? Uh, so we have fairly important support resistance line on this one point two three three. It's held a number of times in this zone support 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 support. So maybe. You know, this thing holds in here, but it's not strong enough uh, to, to be buying it. Where we would maybe consider it is if the, so we have an ERI, we have a double ERI essentially, but we really would need to see a TSI come back above 20 and turn green, right? And ideally a signal going green here, but this is just flatlining mostly. Uh, so, so that is, you know, so in this case, we always talk about where, where would, what would rain Wayne Gretzky do, right? So uh, figuratively, where's the puck going? Well, we don't need to exactly know what we can do is set an alert, say, well, when it, when price gets here, that would be, uh, that would be an indication that, uh, you know, this thing's kind of breaking higher. So, and, and why, why at that level? Well, we can see visually that's sort of a that's above the 50 period EMA and above the local high back here. I mean, it's it's a way it's a reason to look at it again, uh, but but not much um, not much else to see here. The average true range is still bearish. So radar is all red uh, for now. I, I would leave that, you know, I'll add it. Let's do this. I'll add it to our watch list. So it's there and we'll come back to it. OK, so uh, with that in mind. Uh, let me do that here and we'll come back. Where did our heat map go? I think I closed that accidentally. All right. Well, let's, let's do this. Let's just go back into our list here. I want to just do some overall market TA here. You know, we have, I have this head and shoulder scenario drawn. Um, I don't know if we're going to get this right shoulder. It's possible that it's just a double top from here to here. You can see I have possible head and shoulders drawn on this and uh, what I would be watching for is a pump, a push higher here, which would then fail. And we'd want to be watching that 25,300 level, which we've been watching for a while now. You know, it was strong support all the way back here, strong resistance here, resistance there got above it. We were watching that uh, and then held back here on this range. We were watching that closely and it's been holding here. But if we lose 25.3, um, it's a little bit tricky to predict where it would go. We have that CME gap down here. Now, normally, if this were a head and shoulders, the measured move normally would be the top of the head to the neckline. When the neckline breaks, would go down here. But but we, this is just barely a head because the head is usually taller than the left shoulder and it's just barely above it. So could this be a double top instead? Sure could. And the Fibonacci on this, 
you know, if we don't push higher here, if we break below this one, kind of all bets are off. But I do have this Fibonacci golden pocket right down in this 21,000 range. So we're sort of in this. We have the Fib golden pocket retracement. We have the CME gap. This whole area is a big question mark. But I would suggest to you that if we come down in this range, these will be great uh, buying in accumulation uh, areas. So I'm going to draw that and we'll just do sort of like this. If we can come down, well, I don't want to say if we can, not everyone wants it to go down. I kind of do uh, because here's why, you know, this is like jumping off the roof onto a trampoline. It's going to propel us higher. And we, we haven't had much of a pullback since the beginning of the year bull. And then remember, I mean, we, I, I was, we were promoting M3 Active Trader in December of 2022 at the lows. And I was saying, guys, I think we're going higher here. Uh, nobody, you know, people, not, well, not everyone listened, but we went up 100%, uh, give or take, since then. So from there, the point is from that cycle low to the high, recent high, we haven't had a meaningful pullback yet. We've come back to the 382 level on the Fibonacci. But for us to go to new highs, you guys, we need to come down lower and sort of, you know, get some more buyers in. And, uh, you, you know, we've heard me talk about Wyckoff patterns. This is a distribution level here, accumulation distribution. So the big powers that be were selling in here. And they'll be selling it any bounce from here, I believe. And so we'll see, you know, ideally, I'd like to see us come back, believe it or not, back down in this 21,000 range, that Fibonacci golden pocket uh, and or if we're going to get, if, if we get that low, I'd like to see a capitulation down to that CME gap, like a quick push down and then we take off, right? So either there or into this range. So we talk about that and show the CME gap in tomorrow's class. Uh, they don't always fill, but they often do and very, very often do. And there's one right in this 20,000 range. So if we do lose 25K, you know, we've got a couple areas of support here. We've got this rising trend line. So I have this question mark there, this rising trend line that goes all the way back, you know, back to here, 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 here. So, you know, we could come down and hold. Let's call it right in around 23,000. And, uh, or I'm just looking to see if we did a massive drop right now ish. Could we hit all three of those? It's certainly possible, you guys. I and mean, we just have to, I wouldn't be buying. The point is this uh, we want to not be going all in on anything. You know, this support line at 25.2, right? 25.3 is a decent area to decent dollar cost average and buy some, but keeping some powder dry for if we come back down to this trend line around this zone here, maybe we do see, we could come down to this 50% retracement level and that would coincide with right here uh, or maybe now here to the, the trend line. So that this, you know, obviously I can't tell the future. It could be like this. We got a couple scenarios and I have this drawn on a, on our, crypto mast or our uh, m3 chart so i'm just recreating that but these are the scenarios that we just have to see what plays out and you see this magnet here of course that's a cme gap so um i don't know i do think uh probably you know if we push higher here it's a right shoulder we come back down and, and somewhere in november december we start pushing higher that's my best read so you know will there be opportunities along the way you know sure if we do see a push higher on the head and shoulder We'll be looking for some opportunities. We'll look at some today. Uh, let's take a look at Ethereum here because uh, we're coming up on the hour. I can stick around a little bit longer. If ETH chart not looking great, though, I mean, uh, let me just clear up some of these different colors and enlarge this for you guys. But, uh, you know, uh, the daily chart looking pretty bearish. But uh, what I did want to share with you Okay, uh, yeah, I'm not going to delete that. I want to share that, show that to you. So ignore the colors for now. What we're looking at right now, uh, that's a pretty ugly chart here. Let's do this here. I'm going to go into the object tree, and uh, I thought I had these in here, but I guess I'll have to fib retracement, fib retracement. I'll just turn these off, and I'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, so basically, from the high, we have this sort of lower highs. We kind of this this red zone here, which we lost. 
he was strong support back in here and it's it was kind of a zone it's not a full on trend line resistance resistance and then of course we're now below that so ethereum i'm not looking too good here um this is a scenario i would consider selling half of the position to buy back lower and uh you know the the bullish scenario is we need to get above this tre upper trend line here and um it does there's nothing really look that looks good here at the moment so eth i would uh, be lightning positions here uh, or being ready to you know stop loss on this could be like 1530 why there below the local low let's call it uh 15 yeah if it's getting back below cuz this lower lows here if it comes back below this 1525 i'm going to say uh, now this is me, uh, you know, ignoring my own rules. I had I had my stop loss for part of the position at sixteen hundred, and I didn't sell. I'm like, you know, I'm going to hold on a little longer. Further proof you should not second guess your initial read on things, and so I'm going to put sell half. I have got a lot. In, and this is my biggest holding in my IRA. Now, does this mean I don't believe in Ethereum? And no, it doesn't. It means I'd rather buy it back lower in a support zone. And when our indicators start to look bullish. Now, we do have a bullish ERI on the daily, but it doesn't. it's not confirming with the TSI. And uh, if anybody's new here, so if you're not familiar with how these things work, our mantra is the ERI TSI signal and bell. So maybe here we'd want to jump over to our trader success checklist. So we have a bullish ERI, early reversal indicator, but it's not above the 21-day moving average. It's not above the 50. We don't have the TSI it's confirming it. So again, confirming indicator on the trend strength indicator is coming up from down below above 20, right? Something like these above 20 and green confirms the ERI. We don't have that. We don't have our signal line is still red and we don't have a green line on our trend indicator or a key or a bell. Okay. So let's just go through it. Repetition is the mother of all learning. Here's the trader success checklist. Uh, this is in your members area. Of course, uh, we do have a page uh, for where you can download this. Uh, by the way, I'm not sure my read. We just changed domains on this. So some things are uh, convoluted. Um, Myrene, maybe you could uh, work on that here or we can work on that today, but we'll get that link to you guys because the old link uh, no longer works, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get that to you. It, it'll be pinned on the YouTube channel. It'll be uh, pinned in there. We'll update that link to get this for free. And so essentially this is our checklist. Is the ERI showing a green up arrow? Check. It is. Uh, is the green ERI oscillator green line? So these are the same thing. We want to see both either or. And just to reiterate that, the green arrow here is showing the same thing as this vertical line in the uh, ERI oscillator. In some classes, we've talked about what this means. We won't do it today. Okay, so we've got one green check. Is the TSI green and above the 20 line? It's not. So we don't get to check this. That would be down below here, green midline and above 20. And in this case, uh, it's not. Is the signal line turned from red to green? No, it is not. And so we don't check that one. So we only have a one out of 19 score. Not very good. Is the trend indicator showing a bell? It is not. Is the trend indicator have a green midline? It does not, right? So that's down here. So this is not a trade worth taking here on Ethereum, but when these start to line up, then it can be. Is there bullish engulfing candle? No. Is candle body at support? No. It's below 21 and 50. Is price above? I just said it's below. So, so this is not, it's not stacking up very well here as a bullish trade. So um, there's really no other reason or rationale to take and buy ETH here. Our early reversal indicator is not enough. Uh, our average true range is not bullish and our radar is mixed daily, weekly, monthly. So so basically ETH is not a buy here. It's not a sell forever. It's maybe maybe sell some because of this downtrending mm, you know, tr trend line here. So anyway, it's one to keep on our radar. Now this red zone here, it could, could come down a little further and turn higher. I would change my mind if uh, we started seeing some of these start to turn green. 
A uh, question from David. When uh, when do you use the vol index? Yeah. So good question, David. I, I don't like the vol index so much on a daily basis because it's rare that it comes down that low, but I do like it on the one hour, four hour. So if we switch over to Ethereum uh, here, um, you know, this can be a great signal uh, for that. Let's go to a four hour and show you what I mean here. So I'll go wide, a big screen and turn off the average true range for now, which is bearish. Um, so right, the vol index is this indicator down here where I like it. Um, I most use it, you know, from oversold and over uh, bought conditions and to coincide with the TSI and or the ERI. Uh, and so here's an example from down right here. We saw the, the vol index coming out of the lower zone in the red zone, breaking up above and turning from red to black. Sometimes there are fake outs, as we can see, but generally the, the sort of high slope bounces are the best. So back in here, uh, that one, uh, but it, it the, the overall chart would not have supported that. So, you know, this kind of dropping 21 period moving average, you just, we want to look for alignment. And, um, a good example would be this one. So TSI going up sharply, fall index going up sharply. So that was a good signal. These coinciding uh, similarly on, uh, you know, and do keep in mind the overall market direction as uh, which way the wind is blowing, air quotes. So since we, you know, we're in a bear market, would give more credence to, you know, overbought conditions. So right in here was an excellent, excellent bearish signal. TSI went from green to red. It's kind of noisy, but you can see that here. And but before that, well, about the same time, we saw the vol index go from green from overbought down back into the black zone. So this was a good early indicator. There was more downside for this. And uh, sure enough, came down here. Now, this would sort of signify a buy, but again, bear market wind is blowing against us. So we're looking for sort of downward conditions to be more to be stronger. We did see a bullish bounce here. TSI vol index had a little bit of a bounce, you know. Um, where would we have gotten out? No, TSI was saying, hey, this was kind of the top. And uh, and then back in here, vol index breaking down below 20. First did it here, second time here, indicating weakness. All right. So right now it's sort of inconclusive because we have the TSI looking bearish on the four hour here and the vol index kind of pointing down, not really in confluence. This is oversold. Uh, this is already, this is overbought. Forgive me. This has already been oversold. So, you know, they don't always coincide when they do uh, is when they, we want to sort of give them a little bit more uh, credence. We have ERI TSI. So on the four hour ETH looks bearish here and, um, you know, it could come back down. I'm going to hold that 1525 as my sell alert because why? Again, if it comes and holds where it did before here, that's kind of a bullish double bottom. You know, oftentimes these things will extend a bit, but I have this alert 1525. I'm going to sell half of my position uh, in that and, um, you know, wait for lower lows. I'll stay in just in case it rallies and um, look for a better entry. So hopefully that answers your question. The one hour chart, you know, you'll see a little bit more movement, a little bit more noise on the vol index. But actually, here's a great example. That's why I like the one hour, four hour also. And I'll turn this off. I'll turn the signal line off. What I'm looking at here is just the uh, the average true range flipped to entry as we got the TSI green. Here, let's just zoom back out of this. And, um, it, you know, it's also sometimes fun is to do the uh, bars pattern playback. So what we could do here, how far back would we have to go, though? It's a thing I don't want to go too far back. Uh, replay. Yeah, so we'll watch this. We'll do this. And we're going to do this. So let's pretend we're all the way back here in September, Monday, uh, September 11th. I, I picked a hell of a day, didn't I? Uh, so, and I'm going to hit the play button and basically I, I have to go out of full screen to hit play. What happened? Uh, bar replay. Well, it's down here. I missed it. Never mind. Uh, this little play button. So we're going to hit play. 
and we can see this. We got the ATR went green. We had the TSI green. It happened really fast, though. Here, let me pause this. So we went right back to here. The one hour TSI green vol index broke above here. And then the average true range went green. All three of these sort of happened at the same time over a couple of bars. The first one would turn was the TSI went green here. Okay. That in and of itself isn't a buy. We like to see it above 20. So it was just crossing above 20 here, right? And then it clearly got above 20 there. And set the same time, we had the vol index breaking above, going from red to black. So those were also indications. And then we have the average true range flipping to uh, green. Uh, the ERI in an hourly is a bit too noisy for me and, and it didn't trigger. So uh, that's why I tend to leave that off. But um, uh, I'm not turning this on. I didn't mean to turn that on. Okay, so let's stick with what I showed you. So basically uh, that would have caught this nice little rally here. Let's keep playing it out. So what would you do here? Well, we're overbought on the vol index up here. We're starting to turn red on the TSI. So this is bearish. This is bearish. And you can also come in here. And, and by the way, you see this buy sell. You know, we can sort of reverse armchair quarterback. If we go back to this place and hit buy and sell, I'd let's actually. I'd have to redo it. But it basically, if we were selling here. You can see it put this mark up there. Let's see if we were right. I forgot to do the buy down here when I should have. But uh, let's see. Sure enough, kind of going down. Look at that. Well, well, it did. It caught it from here down to here until it went green again on the TSI. Currently red on the TSI, heading lower on the vol index. See what happens. Kind of came down. I mean, we'd want to be covering the short if it was a short. Because of all the TS, but you can kind of see how these things happen. These are not the clearest signals, but there was a couple of good trades in there. I mean, look at this right up here. This is looking like overbought here, overbought, but right back on this recently, that was a nice little buy. TSI vol index. Boom, 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 boom. See how those align? And then it then it reverses. Exit on the ATR, TSI red broke down on the vol index. So on an hourly chart, those three are great. Now we're kind of in a bullish sequence again. These are more for your day traders, day swing traders. But, um, you know, I do encourage you to use this and sort of test yourself. And uh, it's harder to cheat when you're not sure, you don't remember what's going to happen. Now we're just going sideways uh, and uh, have been for some time. This is on 10x speed. So, um yeah, so so basically, I didn't utilize that well. What you can do is test yourself. Um, what we did here, it says congrats. We had 100% success because we only did one trade. We shorted it, and we would have been up $46 uh, dollars on that. But but again, if if we were to do that over, just, to, just so you know how to use that tool, we really haven't covered that much. And uh, it's called the uh, the bar replay. So you see this thing up here, bar replay? Okay, so let's do this. Uh, what's the deal here? Yeah, so it'll it'll let you kind of go back as far as you want. All right, and now we're totally cheating now because we just did this, but for the purpose of showing you how you would utilize it, now you don't have to replay it at 10x speed. You can go at uh, say let's go 3x speed, and so we're gonna say all right. Um, I don't want to hit play necessarily. I'm gonna go forward one bar at a time okay so now we're kind of getting our buy criteria right so we say all right tsi is above 20 maybe not quite yet i'll go one more bar and now it's starting to look but it's kind of pulling back on the vol index uh, well, when in doubt zoom out and then then here we have the entry on the atr so now we'll go buy put our buy signal here you see and you can click on this keep going through now question is when would you sell it well, uh, you know, we're still on a green average true range. You know, kind of turning over, got a bullish TSI. So we're kind of overbought up in this range, TSI going red, I'm going to sell that. Okay, so there, so we're in a sell situation there. And I can keep going there, waiting for a new buy signal. Still bullish on an average true range, but kind of overbought on the other ones. Maybe I sold prematurely. Um, we could uh, we could say well, we're going to short it here. 
And I'll just hit play, see what happens. And I'm looking at the vol index now. Now vol index is falling, it's falling, it's falling. TSI is getting overbought. Looks like it's heading down, heading down. Good, looks to be short for me. And the ATR almost went bearish. Maybe I should have covered this short by now, but now we're going down. Okay, so I'll wait for that vol index to kind of, well, going back here, I went a little bit too fast. It's it's just sideways market, so this would be buy to cover the short. So, you, but you can see what happens here on this thing. It's a good test. Should have gone long. Well, I know can't can't armchair quarterback. These aren't really the clear signals. It, the, you know, wait till they align. But here we've got TSI looks kind of bullish. Could have bought there, but not really clear. I'm trying to see these all in alignment. We're going to kind of down a rabbit hole, but you see how this works. And then, so let's say. Uh, here we're oversold on the TSI. I want to wait for a TSI green and above 20. We're seeing that here. I would say buy this. Uh, vol index, these are in alignment. So we'll buy and hit play. You know, be ready to to get out if it's wrong. But, um, you know, so I was wrong there. Uh, but I'll, I'll wait till it goes to back up on the TSI. The vol index. Sloping down, vol index. Yeah, I mean, this is a hard read. I would, I would just, I would be out of this. And, um, you know, I'm doing it at an accelerated speed. But anyway, you get the idea. And if nothing else, let me go back to 10x speed just to see what happens here. Uh, ATR is bullish, TSI overbought. Anyway, success rate, 66%, most profitable. So, you know, the, you know, you can play around with this, you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, that was a long answer to a short question, but, uh, you know, it was good to unpack the vol index and hopefully you understand that. Uh, you can use it on shorter timeframes, but really I like the one hour, four hour. Let's go back to our daily here. We're kind of running uh, a little bit long in the class. That's fine. We can go a little bit more. We talked about Solana. I was going to mention that. Uh, Chainlink on a weekly basis is looking really good here. We have our ERI, we have a TSI green and a signal line green. So this is why I wanted to jump over to Chainlink. Nice looking chart here, you guys. So let's unpack this a bit, go full screen for you. And so we have a, you know, we've been sort of having ERIs bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish. Again, wanna make sure that it coincides with the TSI. So this ERI, coincided with the TSI on this bar. So could have had a little pop up here. It was a quick move. And then we had the bearish ERI that went red there. So it would have been out. Maybe it would have been a wash, you know, uh, and uh, that's the kind of market we're in. But, you know, taking these shots, you got to take those shots, like Michael Jordan says. So uh, here we have a bullish ERI. The TSI has gone green. Sounds like gangrene, but gone green. And then the signal line is is green. But now here's what I don't really like about this. I like the signal line at extremes. So when this went red up here, that was a more telling signal because it was already up here in these high levels. Similarly, it was overextended in the negatives where it went green again. So we saw some follow through there, red again. So this green circle back in July of 2022 uh, was a great one. Um, in terms of the uh, overall signal, but we just were going sideways. So that's why we don't use any of these by themselves. It's when they align. So uh, where are we now? Um, you know, we have the the confluence of the of these is the more importantly than what any one of them look at. I mean, uh, preferably, yes, oversold, uh, but we are green on the signal line, but we have the other three. So if we go to our checklist on this one, we have ERI, yes. TSI green, yes. Now this is a weekly chart. What am I missing? What should I wait for? The weekly close, right? Very important nuance here. No matter what time frame you're on, you want to go by the closing candle. This ERI is confirmed because this week's candle closed on Sunday, 8 p.m. Today is Tuesday. So this candle here where it shows green on the TSI, it could change. We have four or five days, five days to go. If if we have a huge sell-off this week, this will turn from green to red. 
it can repaint, right? This is as of now. Repainting means that it it'll change based on, hey, new information equals new decision. This ERI is valid, but not confirmed yet until this goes green. And similarly, this uh, trend indicator, which we also like to watch, uh, is is not yet confirmed. You know, and again, it's this overall market though. We've had a number of fake outs. We had a key bell here, fizzled out. Sideways, sideways, key bell here, sort of fizzled out, key bell here. So, you know, at some point though, we don't want to miss it. So, you know, I think chain link's a good long-term hold. What I really like about this chart, and then we'll go to the trade checklist, is it's trying to get up above that 50-week EMA. And again, think of this as the ice, the ice, the thin ice is the 21 EMA. The green is the thicker ice. We want to see, we don't want to be on thin ice. We want to be standing on thicker ice. So we watch, we want to watch on this. Uh, see the news is it's Mike's weekly. Okay. The news is sort of non-news on the, these other coins, but anyway, but keep an eye on chain link. I do like the fact that it seems to, you see this green box here, you guys, what does that look like to you? Looks like accumulation to me. I mean, we can zoom out, but look at this. It's between these ranges for uh, months here, since for almost over a year, actually. So this is the, in the Wyckoff patterns. This is the accumulation phase. What we're looking for, mark my words, what we're looking for is a close above the 50-week EMA and then the 21 week crossing above it. And you can see, I have my projections on here from down on these levels. I've been watching this for a little while here, but even from these levels, it has a six X potential uh, to old highs. You know, it was obviously better down below where it had 10 X, but like right here, you know, go for this, this the base hits, this, the safer trades, having some allocation here, but when it gets out of this range above the 50 week and closes above the 50 week and then starts to turn above it, that's when this thing starts to go. Okay. So again, where, what, where's Wayne Gretzky here? Uh, here, the alert I would set, even though we'll miss part of it, my safety alert here, I'm going to set it at $8 just because it tells me it's kind of back up in this range, a little bit over $8, $8.05. Uh, that's this line here, which would tell me, hey, we're back above the 50 EMA. We're closing up in here. I want to keep an eye on that. I want to tight leash on chain link because this is a good solid uh, uh, blockchain to own. Not financial advice. Do your own research, etc. Other one I want to look at, uh, comp. Uh, comp is uh, all red on the radar here, but um, the uh, weekly uh, basis here starting to set up for you know, possibly something. Had a fake out here. Really want to start seeing this bottoming pattern for him, right? So so we, we want to be really watching these. The red on the radar this is not good, obviously. So that's that concerns me the most. Uh, we want to see and wait for those to start to turn green. We do have an ERI, bullish ERI here with this uh, vertical line, but uh, the TSI is still heading downwards. So really chain link is the, the better looking one. Let me go back to daily on some of these and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, dailies aren't looking great on, on a lot of these here. Ch Comp Complet does look bearish. It should come down on that. Chainlink still looks kind of bullish. So we talked about that. What else? We've got UNFI. We've got a number of these we've been watching. Bounce plays. Uh, Adam does not look like a bounce play here, unfortunately. Let me check the weekly. Mm, possibly on the weekly, but it just looks so. Again, it's we're un, we're under the thick ice. We're under the thin ice. It's putting it back, it's not even. It's kind of in the warm list. I don't know. Adam is. I'm just going to move it down to the watch list, and I do encourage you guys to uh, to do this with your own. Uh, by the way, if you guys want the watch list here of what we're watching, I can uh, share that, and uh, the link. Let's see, we'll be in the chat for those of you that are here. If you want to like import this list, our Crypto Mastery, Mastery Watch List, and uh, we can try to add that to the uh, to this week's uh, video. Okay, that's our trading basket. So I just dropped that over to a Myrene who can make that happen. All right, so, so let's close out of here and let's see. Let's just kind of take a run through some of these. We had some of these as bounce plays, Polygon, Matic, OGN. Not a whole lot happening here. We've got Metis kind of above its 50-day EMA. That's interesting. I'll take a look at it on a weekly basis. Likely getting a bounce based on Solana news. 
But, uh, you know, again, all of these are like under this 21 to 50 day EMA. That's just, we have to wait a little bit. I want to wait till those are above those EMAs on the daily and weekly basis because that's when the bull market's back. Uh, Rune here, we were watching that through this whole area. Uh, Rune, is, uh, Rune is showing some nice strength. Do need it, want to see it above its 50 day EMA, back above the thicker ice. It's a bit overbought on the uh, TSI. So, you know, this in inconclusive and somewhat conflicting information but look at this on uh, inj we do want to be watching for these new trend zones so the new trend channels that's when the big runs happen and so it looks to me like we are in a new upper trend channel and this is uh, bullish here for uh, inj uh, assuming you can hold that lower edge of the channel and um so you want to keep an eye on your weekly indicators to kind of see it's uh, it seems to be uh, weakness showing some weakness. Our best buys, our best buys are on these bounces here. Look at that. So let me just outline the ideal. If you guys can just wait and watch for these bullish ERI on the weekly, bullish TSI on the weekly, and green on the signal line. That's that was the the start of this little push higher here. So we want to watch for that. So point being, if we come down over the next few weeks and start to turn higher on that. Uh, that would be a good indication to uh, watch for that on INJ. But again, right right now, all red on the radar, not looking too good. You know, the markets are looking a little bit weak here, so uh, don't need to chase things. Let the markets uh, come to you. And uh, we just need the catalyst. And so until we get that catalyst, markets are going sideways, low volume. Not much to see here. Sort of like you hear the detectives say, nothing to see here. It's just, uh, you know, guys, I can't, I wish I could make and manufacture some opportunity here, but we can't always do that uh let's we do usually jump over to the um the hot list of things that are moving but look at that all red uh, solana comes back down and retests i think but that would be a good place to buy solana right around 15 dollars. so i'll set my alert there that would be a double bottom and you know you can get nice profits on these uh, bounce points I've done that before and uh any questions you guys don't see anything. Um, let's do this now. Uh, I seem to have lost it in the uh, the overall scheme of things. But uh, what was it called? The trading view. Big movers. Let's see. Uh, uh, top pre market. I want the crypto trading view. I already said that cryptocurrency crypto view. Top crypto gainers, this is it. Uh, so, right. All right, let's move that over. And then we lost the uh, heat map here. So, crypto heat map. If you guys, um, I misspelled that, of course, here. Okay, so that way, when I save this, by the way, uh, one great tip for you guys, you've heard me say this before, is a product called OneTab. So what I do is I'll click this little icon here and it'll save all of these open tabs so that when I come back next Tuesday for Crypto Mastery, I just reopen that and can reopen all of those tabs here with the click of a button. So that's how um, I keep track of all these different uh, tabs here. And uh, it's useful. It's free. A Google, uh, what is it called? One tab. It's a free Google what should we call it? Um, extension. That's the word I was looking for. You can get that right there. Okay. So uh, that's a good way. That way you don't have to load these charts up every time. So the top crypto gainers here in the crypto markets, let's just jump over to that. And we can sort by percentage change. We have Tellor, never heard of it. Uh, rank is 246. Market cap, 75 million. And beats a sharp stick in the eye. Let's see what this Treller thing is all about. Open it up on super charts. This is up like 27%. It is a nice looking chart here. Sometimes we can find some gems to add to the watch list. Uh, you know, but here's an example of, yeah. Okay. Well, look, you know, this, this is worth noting you guys. So again, uh, a lot of these coins, they have their own personalities, but what you want to look for, I don't see enough history, but often the mark of a, a runaway crypto about to go is right here. The 21 week crossing the 50 week. Now, ideally we'd see a pullback some profit taking, and then the second chance for it. So you may want to add this to our watch list. It's likely going to hit profit taking here, right? It's above the upper Bollinger Band or a modified Bollinger Band. So don't chase this. It's overbought on the weekly. Let's look at the daily though. This, uh, you know, it looks pretty interesting. 
the alert on this, it's pushing up around 50. So we want to see, I want an alert on this when it breaks above 50. So maybe 50 and a half. Those round numbers uh, tend to be sell points. So if we can get above 50 and a half, you know, likely a good buy point. But look at the upper, the Bollinger Band. We saw the same thing happen back here. Hit the upper Bollinger Band, hit this resistance level right around 45, 58, where it is now and rejected. And similarly, we had an overbought TSI. So I'd wait on this, but I'd keep it on our radar. Let's do this. I'll add it to our watch list right there. Okay, so uh, what's next? Uh, I'll leave that chart there too. Uh, Trello, I'm not familiar with uh, with that, but we keep an eye on it. So next one, uh, that's up 27%. We have Quinta, 476. You start getting down below, you know, 250 is about the lowest I want to go on something. So Trello or Trello just made it. Quinta, QRL, these are likely our pump, pump and dumps. So they're up big on uh, low volume. So 1 million, but here's, we'll, we'll give you an example of one you don't want to really watch. So Super charts open that up. No idea what this Quenta thing is. Yeah, it's just a pump. It's a pump and dump. Um, you know, not that it's a scam, but when these things pump like that, they get they sell off. So this is not something you want to chase. Down below the fifty uh, period moving average. So you know, we'll not add that to our watch list. So those sort of two criteria there. QRL, uh, you know, volume, not even 350,000, not worth looking at. 21 million, now we're talking here a little bit better. We've got fifth, what is it, Fit Fee? Uh, it's a step app. Um, here's the thing, which means they probably have a monthly membership fee, which is monetization, which means that has a chance to make money and have customers, as we know, customers are good for business. Uh, call me crazy, but that's my theory. <laughs> so, um, of course, being facetious there, but look what we have. We have a kind of a, this is a three inside up pattern. So that's a nice bullish pattern. We've got a 25, a 21 day crossing above the 50, you know, um, the don't, I don't have volume data on this. So it's, so it's just small cap. So be careful, these small caps, but here's the thing on this. What you can start to look for are these bottoming patterns here this is accumulation so fit fee if you're an athletic type person like to run want to learn it learn it learn this i almost said learn into this learn more about this uh you, you know let's look at the weekly what's going on there it's a nice bottoming pattern and wow you know so this is where you might want to say all right from here if i buy this and hold to the old highs well i'm um, shooting you guys we we, we may have Maybe something here. I, I mean, this is part of what we teach in M3 Trader is how to evaluate what coins to watch. So from here in today's price, if it gets back to its old highs, now this is looks like maybe the launch highs unless it's, it has longer history somewhere else. But this is 145x potential. So if we even just go back to this area, we're still at 25x potential. Um, but these things can go to zero also. I mean, this does not mean it's bottomed. And let's see if we draw a simple trend line here. You know, it's, it still has to clear its 50-day moving average, 50-week moving average. So, you know, these are the kind of the ones you might you might put a few hundred dollars in if you believe in them. Go look at the chart. And I, I don't have, yeah, moon or bust. Exactly, David. Moon or bust. A few hundred dollars on these, 145X on the fit fee. Uh, you know, um, it's interesting. We're seeing more mainstream type products building on blockchain, like a fit fee app. It's only a matter of time before we start seeing dating apps on crypto. You know why? Because they, they get a lot of customers and because as I mentioned, customers are good for business. You know, we forgot about that in the internet days early on and the internet bubble broke. And then it was like, oh yeah, we, we actually probably should make money at this. Uh, to be successful. Imagine that. All right. So fit fee, uh, we'll, we'll leave. I don't know. I, I'll add it to our chart as it's just at the bottom of the chart, just or the watch list. And um, uh, keep an eye on that. But just I'm giving you examples, good and bad. So that's fit fee. You can find some right now, you know, uh, these are some you might want to build your own moon or bus watch list. And those of you who want some extra credit, uh, you can do that. ATOR protocol. So let's try to rule these out a bit. 
Um, okay, well, fifty three million in uh, market cap, uh, volume twenty four hours, price sixty two cents. A tour protocol. All right, fine. We'll look at one more on these. What does this thing do? No idea. Has seen some price appreciation here recently. So we see there. Let's open it up on the super charts. Great platform, by the way. Hey, hey, you guys, by the way, uh, if you hadn't seen this, TradingView has a 70% discount this week. Uh, so go Google that, 70% off. I shared that in, uh, in the M3 group and the Retire Rich group. So you guys should have that link. And uh, great time to upgrade to premium, 70% off. Great time to do it. ATOR protocol, weekly chart, love this, bullish engulfing candle. ERI, but this TSI looks a little wonky. Eh, I don't know. Moon or bust? Sure. Let's see. On the daily basis, so we have uh, we have kind of a, a nice nice big candle there. It's not quite a rocket, but uh, it hit the upper Bollinger Band, sold off. Uh, again, if you guys are new, the profit-taking levels are whenever it hits this upper Bollinger Band, the modified Bollinger Band, if you're new here, Mike, how we modify these is you right click on the standard Bollinger Band, go into settings, change standard deviation from two to three because crypto is more volatile than regular stocks. Good profit taking uh, signal. And then uh, and then to, to be able to get back in lower. Anyway, uh, ATOR protocol. I mean, what I would do here is set an alert here uh, up the new highs. We like new highs because we're in a price discovery zone. And that's when we can see these things really run. So, you know, despite this bear market here, these new protocols that are going up and to the right, I'm going to, I know I'm a degenerate crypto trader. I'm going to do it. I'm going to add it to our crypto mastery list because it's it's up and to the right, you know, and we were back above, it's back above the 21 and 50 period moving average, kind of forming a base. I don't know, kind of like the chart. And uh, you know me, if, if show me the chart, I'll tell you the news. And all that good stuff. So if we had more time, we could go through a lot of this. Uh, see, 70, 96 million volume in the last 24 hours. STMX, 255. It's almost at my cutoff. All right, screw it. Let's do it. As Branson says, we'll do one more. Oh, Storm X, don't know about this one. So... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't love the chart necessarily. It's got a good long history, but it's just kind of gone sideways for a long time. Uh, Spidey sense. My magic eight ball says, no, I'm not a big, I'm not a fan of the chart. So that's, that's, that's a no go for me. But uh, anyway, we'll keep an eye on these. Anything else jumping out? Let's just go through and see if any of these are, we are familiar with Ter Terra Luna. Yikes. Uh, well, uh, indulge me. I bought a little bit of the Luna C after it crashed as a moon or bust, which, um, I mean, look, is this, they're trying to revive Luna Do Kwan, I don't know. He's probably not involved. I don't know exactly the details, but it's, it, it's hitting that 50 day EMA. It'll probably reject here. So. Uh, yeah, no, uh, bye Felicia. That's a no. So, um, I'm just looking for something to give you guys some, uh, maybe something to ponder over and maybe dabble in that looks somewhat bullish here, but you know, we don't want to trade against the market. The market looks like it's coming down. Here's our old friend storage, which is like Filecoin, which is like AWS, uh, storage has kind of been going sideways, mostly unaffected. Uh, let me let me pull it up on the big chart and just see. But that was a moonstream pick from okay. Well, look, you guys, keep an eye on storage. All green on the radar. Let me go back in time a little bit and just see and open this up here. You know, it's way off its highs. Cool project. I mean, if it can compete with AWS uh and get customers again customers good for business i mean it's it's a tough one because aws dominates the cloud storage market but huh interesting well i mean you know we have this old resistance level that's kind of a good strong support zone 
but uh, I don't know. This isn't, it's not strong enough. I just, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, it's one we can keep an eye on. I'll set an alert break. If it breaks back above this area, I just will, I won't look at it until it gets back above, say, 55 cents. I'll set an alert just above that. And uh, and we'll just see what happens. And that'll be a good time to revisit that. All green on the radar is interesting to me, but I don't know how much legs it has. It's coming down on the TSI. What does a weekly look like? It's rejecting at it's 50-wake moving average. It's not really ready yet. It does have a bullish engulfing candle there on the weekly. And so if it can pop up, all right. This is, again, where I, I make a judgment and then I look for what I'm missing, where I'm wrong. Um. On this weekly chart, looks like a double bottom here. We're bullish on the radar. If we can close, if storage can close above this weekly EMA, then that's worth keeping another, take another look at it. Uh, and uh, I just got an alert. I do have an interview in 30 minutes for the Future of Crypto Summit. I've got one more interview to do. Somebody in Puerto Rico is a specialist in uh, offshore you know, moving to Puerto Rico for stock, uh, tax savings. Anyway, you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to do another alert, a little bit earlier one, at forty five, just above 45 cents. I'll just see 0.4525. And the reason is that could clue us in that we're closing above the 50-week EMA. And why is that significant? Sometimes I have to ask questions because you guys are doing other things and I need you to pay attention. So the last time, this is why it's good to zoom out and good to have coins that have history the last time that the 21 week was a went above the 50 week right because storage got beaten down beaten down beaten down in 2020 well right was i was crossing up this thing was ready to run again it shot up pulled back to see honestly i'm waiting for these kind of scenarios when we get the breakout and the pullback to support the 21 and 50 where it like bounces off that 50 week that's when these things are going to really run, okay? But we can start spotting them early when the price itself goes back above the 50-week. The biggest thing that caught my eye was this radar, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, all green, bullish engulfing candle. So if this can follow through and get above that 50-week, you know, this could have some legs. And then it, let's say it pops up here to 55 cents, like maybe even higher and then pulls back. And so if we see this type of scenario, uh, you know, on any of these coins, this is what I want you to be looking for. Bounce back to the 50 EMAs, right? So just imagine these start coming up. This would sort of come up like that. But but that's the ideal scenario we're looking for, you guys. Mark my words. That's, what, that's what's going to happen. So we just have to be a little patient. All right. Any questions? Uh, Susie says, I like storage. I've been hodling for a long time. Fingers crossed. Yeah, there you go. I would, I would hodl here. And, um, you know, if you like the project, the biggest thing I like here, are bullish engulfing candle on the weekly. But remember what? It has to close here. End of, end of the week, Sunday, because if it sells off. See, here's the thing. And here's another lesson to keep in mind. Let me remove the drawings here because this is also important. You know, if we go back to last week, at one point, last week's candle was a big green candle. It was all the way up here. And you might have been saying, time to buy. Storage, look at that. Breaking above the 50-week. Three green candles. Good to go. And then what happened? It sold off. Similarly, this candle here at one point was a rocket. Our favorite indicator, a rocket on the launch pad. How do I know? Because you see this candle body up here. It was, it, it was at one point up here, we were sitting on the launch pad, had the wick down below. But that's why it's so important. Wait for the end of the time period that you're watching. Uh, similarly here, look at this on storage, July of 23. It was a huge green candle up here. This was a huge pump, but what happened? It sold off. I don't think I've ever seen a doji, uh, a morning star doji like that with such a high topping tail and it came back down. Sure enough, came back down to, down below. So, and then the follow through. So basically my point is this could turn red. This could turn red and then that would be a bearish sign. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell, wouldn't necessarily buy, but if it can close as a bullish engulfing candle at the end of the week, 
then that would be bullish and potentially to buy more. Okay, you guys. Well, um, I think that we about covered it. I don't see anything else that really catches my eye here. We've got uh, some micro caps, uh, just you know, pirate chain still languishing. We're waiting on that with some other ones here. KNC we looked at last week just kind of looks good, but maybe really low volume. Watch these low volume coins. Be aware of those. And, uh, you know, it might not be a bad time just, but the markets are down. Everything's red. We've got, uh, some that I, we talked about TRB, let's go back and watch the replay on these. We've got TRB, Fit V, ATOR, kind of looking good. Badger, wait, Badger, no, no, not Badger. Storage. So we'll leave these on here for next week. Uh, and again, um, if you don't have this yet, yeah, look for use your trader checklist. Uh, if you're watching the replay on YouTube, please like the channel and uh, subscribe, maybe even share it with a few people. It's free every week. And if you'd like more information about our indicators, you can go to cryptomastery.org and you can find out more about them. Now, I, I, the, the link may not work because we just changed domains on this. So we're working on that. Uh, so it's depending on when you see this, that should work. And uh, Mary says, good class. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, David. Leslie, thanks. Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, and if you do want more information on our highest level live classes, uh, Moonstream M3 Crypto, this is our active trader class at moonstream.io slash M3. Our retire rich classes is more long-term hodls and emerging markets. You'd have to email us at moonstreamvip at gmail.com. Uh, a lot of all different levels of services. Oh, and by the way, I, I will mention the, the the summit is coming up. It looks great. The Future of Crypto Summit, guys. Um, yeah, great, Susie. Please share that. Uh, but uh, also, the if you go to Future of Crypto Summit, if you haven't already signed up, go ahead and get your tickets. It's free, or you can buy the recordings. If you guys are in M3 or in uh, Retire Rich, you're going to get those anyway. So... Uh, but look at all these cool, these great speakers here. Um, they, they've done a great job on the site. We've got Max Wright. We've got Dirk De Bruin. You can see all these topics here. It's going to be awesome. Hardest money in history. Uh, did a great interview with Max Wright. Uh, Art of Buying the Dip with Dirk here. Ricardo Martinez, Wallets. Great guy. I met him in San Diego. Michael Hearn, the producer of Uncensored Crypto, talks about the hidden agenda behind CBDCs. Great interview Mike did with Michael Hearn. Um, Katie goes by Katie the Russian. She talks about dual citizenship. A great interview there. Matt Hill, Mike did both of these interviews. So Mike and I were both doing these interviews here. Uh, you know, a little bit higher level benefits of running your own Bitcoin node. So those that are more advanced. And Mike, uh, Kevin Coskello, this is who got Mike, my business partner, into crypto years ago. A great guy. I met up with him at uh, Bitcoin 2021. So you can see it's just some great topics here. I interviewed this guy, Justin Newton, preparing for future regulations. Some really good insights on regulation. Uh, great interview with Mark Yusko from Morgan Creek Capital uh, that Mike did, uh, owning crypto to make sure you don't run out of money. This is just, a, Mark Yusko just always gives his all. If you like Mark, um, you're going to love that interview. If you don't know who he is, definitely follow him. He's partners with Anthony Pompliano. And hoping, hoping to get Pomp as an interview for the relaunch of the summit in January. A couple other interviews. Juan Villaverde uh, is usually often appears on Max's uh, channel too. He's from Weiss Research, Market Cycles. Really fascinating stuff about he, he does pure market timing. He doesn't even look at price. He's got some interesting ideas on when we should bottom, when this next cycle should happen. So look for that. Scott Phillips, a uh, reverent uh, trader, trading lots of money uh, out of Thailand. He's an Aussie. This should have an R rating on this. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of language, but he's a character, as you can tell from the photo. Uh, Coach K, uh, someone I've learned a lot from over the years in trading. He's uh, did a great interview with him. Looks much different now, but um, he's a real deal. How to predict market direction changes before they happen. Uh, he's really good at uh, Ichimoku trading. I uh, interviewed Lark Davis from uh, Crypto Lark, has a huge following and a uh, great guy. How to build wealth in the next bull run. Uh, that was uh, one of my favorite interviews too. So just so you can see on and on, uh, Mike did the interview uh, with this high neck and Gina. I think he's from Trezor possibly. Uh, and then a couple of these other ones, uh, leaving a legacy through crypto investing, explosion in crypto gaming. Mark Goldman, pump and dumps. Uh, I do a session uh, protecting crypto trades from catastrophic losses here. 
uh, Jason BTO. Uh, he's a character as well. I've he's been trading crypto a long time. Uh, somewhat controversial, but uh, interesting interview. Bitcoin Lightning Network. We've got Web3 Masterclass, DeFi. This was interesting. And uh, this this took, this took was didn't take the turn I thought it would be. He's he's pretty conservative, this, this guy, but it's still a good interview. Uh, this one's great. Explaining blockchain to grandma. That was one of our topics. And, and strangely, we through a mutual friend connected with Yuri, uh, Yuri's extremely overqualified for this topic, but he did write a book a while back on uh, essentially on that topic, really talking about well, what is crypto and blockchain and all that. So um, anyway, uh, look for that uh, future of crypto payments. This this is a great interview with uh, BitPay and um, with Merrick, uh, the VP of marketing that I did and sort of the future, where things are headed for how are you going to use this crypto stuff on a day-to-day -day basis? And uh, one of the highlights, last but not least, so uh, Dr. Demelza Hayes, I interviewed her. She's head economist over at um, Cointelegraph and talked about crypto-friendly IRA strategies for growing tax-free wealth. She's figured out how to do active trading tax-free in a Kraken account and, an, and a Roth IRA. And she talks about exactly how to do that. Uh, some of you have seen that interview. I sort of leaked it to the uh, M3 and the, uh, the Retire Rich group. Uh, and I know some of you enjoyed that. So we have one more interview we're going to put in here. It's a buddy of mine, Davin Michaels, so is going to talk about uh, the tax advantages of setting up in Puerto Rico, and uh, which is interesting. I might be popping down there soon, by the way. I've got another buddy, a uh, uh, crypto buddy who um, lives down there. He bought a penthouse 10 years ago. Uh, he's a doctor. I think he's gone up 10x. 10x because all these rich people are flocking to Puerto Rico for the tax savings. So, you know, start thinking about this. Where are you going to park your profits on the next bull run? So uh, with that in mind, I've got to get going and get ready for that interview with Davin here. Uh, this guy will be right there. And um, so uh, thanks, everybody. Again, Future of Crypto Summit, go get signed up for that. And uh, we uh, will be uh, talking to you soon. We are looking for some sponsors. If anyone has anybody in mind, it'd be great exposure for those people. And we'll let us get more eyeballs on this. But um, anyway, uh, thanks, everybody. And I hope you enjoyed the class. And I will see you guys tomorrow in M3. Uh, and yes, see, good class, good class. I did drop the summit link. And um, okay, awesome, you guys. I'm going to uh, sign off here, but we'll talk to you soon. And have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.